Hello, good evening. Uh, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine surgery and assisted conception at the Hamilton Fertility Centre in London. And I'm going to talk to you about a slightly, quite an interesting case here. And I think it's, it, it questions uh, the, the, very fun, the, the very basics of our understanding of the trigger and how the LH and HCG work. And that's something which I, I thought it was a good case. And the, a doctor who sent, sent it to me uh, has really thought about this quite well. And I think it's worth looking at it. Now let's look at it. A 28 year old lady for ovulation induction. Her FSH was 8.4, the LH 10, remember that. And then AMH 2.5 nanogram per ml and a BMI of 27 and the antral follicle count of eight. She received HMG 75 international units every day for 10 days and she had a follicle growth of 20 millimeter and 19 and the endometrial thickness of 9 millimeter, a triple line and an HCG trigger of 10,000 HCG was given. Now, you, uh, you'll have to pay attention to what happened. On the day of trigger, the LH level was done, an LH of 12, a uh, progesterone which was 0 0.04 nanogram. 37 hours later, the progesterone was done again and it was 0 0.683 nanogram per ml. Now, consider that. She would have ovulated by then, considering that the trigger has, has worked. 60 hours after ovul ov ovulation, the post-trigger LH was 44.5 and the progesterone 1.5 nanogram per ml. So you've seen the LH rise 60 hours later. And then 84 hours later, the LH rise was 36 and the progesterone was 3.45 nanogram per ml. And that's, that's quite interesting. So what have we learned here now? We've learned here that you've got uh, an HCG trigger. And the, the question that was asked is, you know, how to time the trigger and based on follicle size and endometrial thickness. And that's, that's one. Or do you use urine kits and uh, blood levels? And I'll tell you one thing about urine kits. They have got a probably false uh, ratio of around 20%. And I'm not, uh, I sometimes uh, move away from it unless to be an indicative marker uh, when we are doing RUI. Uh, will there be endometrial asynchrony? And that's a very important question to ask because what you're, you're, you're again doing is you are linking it with IVF and you're taking the information we get on IVF and the USG picture shows 36 hours later that there has been uh, signs of ovulation and but this was not supported by hormonal levels and why so and that's that's the interesting part here so let's look at it this way has, has the trigger worked and has HCG worked as a trigger the answer is yes it has and that's spot on. How do we know? We have confirmed it with a scan. And the problem is that there is no other way to confirm that HCG has worked. There isn't, isn't any other way because you're measuring LH and HCG is not LH. HCG is a surrogate marker and a surrogate for LH. So you're not measuring the right hormone at all. You can measure HCG and all that the HCG measurement tells you is that she has taken the trigger. That's all it tells you. And so what has happened to this lady? This lady has ovulated and has ovulated and the trigger has worked and that is a scan finding. In IVF2, when you give an HCG trigger, the only confirmation that the trigger has caused the uh, you know, disruption of the cumulus uh, complex is by collecting eggs. Short of it, or showing signs of ovulation, there's absolutely no way that you would know whether uh, HCG has worked. So effectively what has happened is the LH has risen. And what does that mean? And that, th this is something which is fundamentally basic to understanding what happens to HCG. And it took me some time to go through and read and understand what happens to the hypothalamic pituitary axis with HCG. And in fact, it is not disturbed. The LH rise is independent of your HCG. So Follicle ovulation has happened and the LH rise occurs completely independent of it. So 
electrolysis has occurred and the electrolysis has occurred after ovulation and that is something which you see often and where is that evidence coming up from and the evidence is comes up basically from when you do IUI and you trigger with HCG and two follicles rupture and that another follicles which are 14 and 15 millimeter and they don't rupture sometimes and then they rupture with spontaneous LH surge and that sometimes gives rise to three or four follicles rupturing and we know that that loop of LH loop is remains intact even when you give HCG so I would say if you know which trigger can you measure and which trigger can you really get an idea about and I'll say you get a better idea about with analog trigger and you know those of you who attend my teaching on analog trigger uh, will be able to show you how the analog trigger works and how the LH rises, how progesterone rises and all those are linked to a pre ovulatory signals of uh, you know effective uh, LH response now if you have a look at her and let me go back to the slide and if you have a look at this slide where it says uh, the, the LH was high and the progesterone started climbing and that is a very crucial part and what happens just before ovulation is the progesterone starts rising and how does it rise see granular cells under the effect of LH start getting luteinized and th that's again a, a, a sign of progesterone increase and progesterone increase literally follows the LH surge and if you see here the progesterone rose to 1.5 and then rose to 3.45, a dramatic increase. That's a very good sign. So effectively, if you're doing an IUI, I think you've done the right thing by linking it to the HCG trigger and not waiting. The HCG, all that the HCG trigger will tell you is that she has had that surge slightly later. So if there are any other smaller follicles which have reached that size, she may effectively ovulate from there. I think you've triggered at the right time of 20 uh, you know millimeter because uh, the evidence on gonadotrophins is 20 millimeter the endometrium is absolutely right trilaminate so I think your your decision or uh, uh, was absolutely right uh, I think the, the the LH is just a, a marker to okay, can put us to confusion and uh, post HCG trigger doing LH has limitations and it grossly confuses us so th this woman has ovulated and has had an LH surge which has come after and that's it it's a short one but I think a very interesting one considering basic sciences thank you very much